How does an electric eel generate an electrical discharge? What's the main sniper of the snake's world capable of? What creature is the quickest representative of the animal kingdom? Now you'll learn everything. Smart Pizza's with you. In this episode, you'll see animals with the most unique possibilities. Electric Eel Each of you has definitely heard about the electric eels, but something tells me that you don't even have a notion of how they live, what they do, what they eat, how they hunt, and why it's really worth avoiding them. I suggest that we set the record straight and start from the most interesting thing. It was given this name without a reason. The thing is that it generates a lot of current. For example, an adult specimen, about 10 feet long and weighing some 44 pounds, can generate a discharge with a voltage of more than 500 volts. This way, the eel will deafen its opposer and calmly, without any hassle, swallow it. If you find it difficult to imagine how much it is, I'll tell you one thing. It's enough to mow down all the fish around in a radius of almost 20 feet from the eel. Even a giant horse won't overpower this energy. This is exactly why the adult eels have almost no enemies. Yes, of course, some animals continue hunting them, hoping to be lucky. Anyway, now you understand what chances they have. Even this crocodile, trying to remain unnoticed, will get a discharge in a second and either check out or escape with the strongest fright and receive a lesson for the rest of its life. But why is the eel so powerful? What is responsible for the current generation? In reality, the eel has three corresponding organs. One of them is needed for communication with its brethren and navigation. The other two are able to generate electricity of high power that the fish uses to attack. It's interesting that the eel can change the frequency of impulse release, the frequency and their strength. If it's about an attack, it'll hit to the fullest. If an eel is exploring the surroundings, these light and short impacts will be enough. By the way, we gradually approached another feature of this creature. It has a good spatial awareness with the help of the same electricity. It's surprising, isn't it? On the other hand, what else do you want from the creature that spends almost all its time in the turbid waters? It wouldn't merely survive without such super abilities. This way the eel calmly moves around, isn't afraid of anybody, and can communicate with his brethren when it's bored. If the eel joins a battle with somebody, it attacks first. It has no defense. If a crocodile assaults an eel, the eel will only be able to respond by the strongest discharge. Anyway, this electro from the animal world won't improve its health. Both will be sent to their glory. Spitting Cobra I remember I used to like spending time playing computer games and adored shooting, but the cheaters irritated me, especially those who played with banned programs and could shoot farther and more precisely than all the rest. As you understand, I touched upon this subject not without a reason. I associate the spitting cobra we're going to talk about next exactly with the cheaters. What are we used to? You're right, snakes are snakes. They creep, disguise, hide in the bushes, or climb the trees to have a better view. At last, they make a jerk in the direction of the opponent, suffocating it or injecting poison in the victim's body. Everything seems to be logical. Anyway, the spitting cobra doesn't care about these rules. These crawlers, in some miraculous way, learn to apply their toxins at a distance without a direct contact with its opponent. This way, they can make up to 30 shots, with each of them releasing about 4 milligrams of poison. Consequently, reddening, acute pain, temporal or even permanent blindness occur, and naturally death. It's not likely that somebody, even the most cunning creature in the world, will be able to dodge such a number of gears. To make matters worse, even if they do that, these spitting cobras will still be able to bite their enemy, what they almost always do. This is the way how they finish off their opponent. The secret of these crawlers lies in their morphology. The reptile has its venomous gland in the neck. The poison goes out through the round holes in their teeth. It's not unusual and typical for all the snakes. What differs our heroin is the pumped neck. While contracting, special muscles press the channels of the venomous gland and the poison releases. Along with this, the tooth holes look another way, not down but forward. That's why the volley is directed right in the opposer's face, not leaving any chance for rescue. 
It's a good piece of news that the snake mostly uses this sheet as a defense and don't show any aggression against humans without reasonable frames. And still, while walking along the forest in Africa or South Asia, be extremely careful. Spitting cobras can be not so far away. But if that happens, just stand, don't move, and pray to the superior. In other words, peregrine falcon. After all, this raptorial bird easily leaves its enemies headless at the speed of 250 miles an hour. Just a sight of this self-confident falcon causes uncontrolled endorphins to burst in everybody around and people as well. At the same time, the bird doesn't stand for its dimensions. They're almost the same as an ordinary crow has. You can meet it everywhere possible with the exception of Antarctica and the Arctic. The peregrine falcon is too lazy to live there. It's not a noble work to fly back and forth. It's another thing to hunt in the same point all around the year, choosing what you'll eat for dinner or supper this time. Basically, the peregrine falcon feeds on other feathered creatures, catching them right in the flight. At the same time, there are exceptions from the rules where the bird wants something exotic. Those are both snakes and insects with frogs that can become a part of their menu. If you think that the smaller creatures have all chances to escape, I'll remind you of the speed at which the falcon swoops down on the prey, 250 miles per hour. Any other bird would go inside out because of such a pressure, whereas this one copes with it. After all, evolution equipped them with bone nodes near the nostrils. The eye's safety is guaranteed by the third lid. Such hunting style is extremely effective and comfortable. After all, no battles needed. You're in the bird's mouth before you know it. But if something goes wrong and the victim is still breathing after this attack, the peregrine falcon will be glad to finish it off with his powerful claws. However the peregrine falcon tries, it won't overpower our next guest concerning the power of the blow. The Japanese mantis shrimp. It isn't just a beautiful and colorful crustacean. Its limbs cover a monstrous power many power lifters have never dreamt of. So, we start with the fact that this shrimp is exactly not a mantis, despite its name. We can see a big mantis shrimp inhabiting the bottom of the Indo-Pacific region from Guam to Africa. The species we consider is one of the biggest and most colorful mantis shrimps. Their size varies from 1.2 inches to 7 inches. They also have a different coloration and live up to 20 years. It's difficult to imagine how many victims it manages to send to glory at a precise blow. You won't believe it, but this creature is capable of chopping a motorboat screw. This phenomenon has an explanation. If you take a closer look at its legs, they look quite like usual ones, except that its forelimbs end with hammers instead of blades. No, it'd be better to call them Thor's hammers. They hit at a strength of 330 pounds, which exceeds the animal's weight about 2,500 times. You can think, the animal is strong enough, maybe it comes short of speed, and you won't hit the target again. It delivers a knockdown blow instantaneously. The peak acceleration speed is equal to 64 miles in 2.7 milliseconds. It's one of the highest, if not the highest speed of attack among living creatures. This lightning quick speed, even the water can boil. Do you imagine to which extent the strong creature is unique in its own kind? And more, it's quite possible that the arthropod uses its ability to boil water the way we do when cooking a meal. Scientists consider that this monster warms the water up to thermally process the food before eating. The researchers have been puzzled by its technical secret for a long time. They say that even the most experienced warriors visited this mantis shrimp to ask for advice. It turned out that the mystery lay in the snapping method. It's all about the fact that the creature's arms don't move before they're strong enough, and later they act like a trigger. They contract and descend on the enemies with all their might. What's more, their legs remain safe and sound due to special mineralized cover given by the nature. Common Basilisk This is how an ancient lizard species from the basilisks they can run on water without any relation to deities or secret magic. Here you'll think, author, you're caught. We have known about such creatures for a long time. For example, those are water striders that can run on water not worse than this semi-lizard. But I tell you that these striders weigh as much as a needle, whereas the lizards 
mildly speaking, are bigger. They rush along the water surface, similar to tiny dinosaurs on their hind legs, and develop a speed of up to 6.6 .6 feet per second. In addition to that, their toes are quite long. They function like short flappers in the water. So, a lizard, in essence, moves on water in a series of short, powerful strokes, quickly pushing off the surface, not letting itself be drowned. But if you have ever gone swimming, you know that the body starts swinging a lot, so it is extremely important to keep balance. The common basilisk has learned to do that perfectly. Just have a look at how it moves from side to side to stand and not fall into the water. In addition, during each step, the lizard grasps a small bubble of air with its long toes of the hind legs that lets minimize the water contact. The basilisk removes its leg before the bubble implodes. In reality, the lizards are one of the most surprising creatures on our planet. We have just had a creature that can run on water, and now we turn to the reptile able to shoot with its eyes. This reptile usually grows as long as 3.9 inches. It can seem that it constantly falls someone's victim. This is a small lizard that can make up a solid meal. Everything seems to match. But Mother Nature says nothing of this kind. The horned lizards have a specific feature. They shoot with their blood right from their eyes. The attack with their own blood seems to be a strange thing. It is so strange that your enemy can trivially go crazy from the very fact of it and voluntarily retreat. Such an original shooting is provided due to blocking a head bloodstream. The eye pressure goes so high that the capillaries explode, pouring an enemy with a dense blood jet. Apart from that, the blood has an irritating effect because the lizard eats ants or other small creatures in its free time. As a result, the lizard's offender doesn't frighten itself but leaves the battlefield with a mucous membrane irritation like from a pepper spray. So, if you visit America one day and find yourself in wild nature, keep in mind that such things can also happen there. That is why, if you see lizards, don't linger and go away from them as far as possible, some 16 feet or more. Immortal Jellyfish This unique jellyfish doesn't care about all those basilisks, falcons, or horned lizards. It was first discovered in the Mediterranean Sea but its aerial is considered to extend much wider than we can think. These creatures reproduce themselves sexually and reach puberty already at the age of two weeks. Their body, looking like a bell, is transparent, and you can see a digestive system inside. But, as you understand, it isn't the most important thing. The point is that they can stop their life cycle and reverse it. In other words, an adult jellyfish turns into a polyp and repeatedly goes through all the stages. It is necessary for them to survive in difficult sea conditions, for example, if they are wounded. After performing this trick, the immortal jellyfish can solve problems they had before and continue prowling the oceans. Except it is not worth thinking that there are millions of them around the world, it is not the case. The word immortal relates to the jellyfish that can reverse the time. However, if they are attacked or, what is even worse, about to eat, needless to say, that won't be able to survive. However, scientists continue studying the unusual organism. I should think so. Do you realize what it is capable of? Imagine how easier people's lives will be if we manage to reverse time, heal our own wounds, and cure diseases in such a way. But why reverse time if we can just learn to not get older? Mother Nature thought and created Axolotl. The point is that it reaches puberty and gets ready to give offspring without a transformation into an adult form. In other words, avoiding metamorphosis. This little creature looks like you would need to guard it or even hold it at home. In reality, an axolotl is a real predator. Its mouth teems with sharp teeth, ideal tool to catch snails, worms, and small fish. These amphibians seriously gain activity when it is about to rain. The ancestor's memory lets them know that with the celestial humidity, there will be more tasty insects on the water surface. These beauties, together with the immortal jellyfish, are surveyed by scientists. People try to solve this natural mystery. After all, if they manage to do this, it will be a real breakthrough set to change the future. For now, people just get them as pets and try to vigorously look after them. This is the case when a smaller creature requires much more attention and care. A trivial example, if you place an axolotl into a drier and cooler environment, 
lower the water level, it'll turn into an adult salamander. This will change its appearance and coloration and remove gills. It's strictly prohibited to do that without specialists. After all, at that rate, this wonderful creature runs a high risk of death. Bulls are strong animals in general. It's as if they were specially created by nature to demonstrate their strength and use it for useful purposes. But there are some particularly strong creatures among them. One of them was the now deceased bull named Bodacious. This giant, weighing 1,900 pounds, was a rodeo star in the 1990s. He participated in many competitions and threw off even the most experienced riders and cowboys of the planet. No matter how hard they tried to hold on, Bodacious would twitch, jump, gallop, and eventually get the upper hand. Often, all this ended in injuries for riders. For this, Bodacious was called the strongest and most dangerous bull on the planet, as well as the greatest bull that's ever been saddled. Okay, everything is clear with rodeo, but what about ordinary bulls? Well, here we should definitely single out the Belgian blue bulls. You can't really call them ordinary, and you can tell that just by looking at them. They're one of the strongest bulls on the planet right now, and unambiguous leaders in terms of muscles. This incredible physique is the result of mutation. Belgian blue bulls were specially bred to be so powerful and huge. And to do this, scientists have altered myostatin in their bodies. This protein prevents muscle growth, but in Belgian blue bulls, it doesn't work so they can grow to incredible size. They don't show their strength to everyone. Muscles, in this case, are of practical importance for people, not for bulls. More lean meat and milk can be obtained from these creatures than from ordinary bulls. As for the non-mutant bulls, many people are sure that the Chianina bull from Italy should be called the strongest. Among the bulls of this breed, you can find many phenomenal giants, which are as tall as an adult human, weighing as much as a ton or even more. With such size, Chianina bulls are capable of performing almost any task in agriculture. Today, Chianina bulls and cows are used as a meat breed and are also shown at various exhibitions. It's time to move on to other strong animals. Let's start with the elephant. Being the largest land mammal, the elephant simply can't help but be strong. When you weigh 5 to 6 tons, your body length reaches 20 to 23 feet and your height reaches 10 to 13 feet, you will be very powerful by default. Here, take a look. For example, how an elephant cracks walnuts. It only pin them down a little and instantly crush them. I would even say it smudged them. And now, remember how hard it is for us to crack walnuts and realize the power of the elephant. Nuts are nothing to such a big creature, because it can even fell trees and uproot them in a fit of rage. In just a minute, the giant can fell a large tree. Elephants, by the way, have a special relationship with trees. For example, Indian elephants are often used in agriculture, where they drag heavy logs and help builders and farmers. It's an easy job for the elephant. But still, not all elephants work with people. They generally don't like people and other outsiders very much, and on occasion they can take it out on them. Basically, cars get it. Elephants can throw, break, turn over, and destroy them literally to the ground, as if they were some kind of toys. It's not surprising that an adult elephant has no natural enemies. Only occasionally can predators try to attack elephants. For example, lions can defeat an elephant in a large group but only occasionally. In a one-on-one -on -one fight, no one will do anything to an elephant. It's too strong and big. Big cats are strong creatures, but perhaps the tiger is a little stronger than all of them. There are several reasons for this. Firstly, the tiger is the largest representative of the feline family, not counting hybrid animals. And secondly, this big cat is a loner. It's more difficult to hunt alone than in a group, so, for example, the lion is weaker than the tiger. It's used relying on its congeners. In the process of evolution, tigers have honed their hunting skills alone and have become incredibly strong. These creatures have very powerful jaws. Just look at the way these cats jump. With one leap, they can fly 10 to 13 feet high from a place. It looks very cool. At the same time, tigers are excellent jumpers even with additional weight. It's believed that the tiger can jump over an obstacle of six and a half feet high, holding a 110-pound prey in its teeth. 
As for the paws themselves, they're also very large. Look how much smaller a human hand is than a tiger's paw. One precise blow with such a paw will knock out anyone or even kill them instantly. The tiger also has very long and sharp claws and equally sharp teeth. The force of the tiger's bite reaches almost 7,000 newtons. That's even more than that of Nile crocodiles from Africa. Add the incredible camouflage, the silent stealth mode when hunting, and the phenomenal speed of these cats to it, and you'll have a truly powerful predator. I would even call it the perfect predator. Orca This predator is also perfect. While the tiger is dealing with prey on land, orcas, also known as killer whales, work in the seas and oceans and keep literally all sea creatures at bay. They are one of the largest modern marine predators. They grow up to 33 feet in length and weigh about 8 tons. Perhaps only the sperm whale is ahead of the orca in terms of size among all predators of the world ocean. Orcas are not only large and strong, but also agile. Besides, they are very intelligent. All these factors combined make them extremely dangerous. Seals are more afraid of killer whales than anyone else. This is the main prey of orcas. A killer whale can easily deal with a seal alone. In this case, it can do it very brutally. For example, toss that prey into the air at first. Just imagine what kind of power you need to have to do something like that. But more often, orcas hunt seals in groups. They notice a seal on an ice floe, gather a group and move towards the ice floe. Orcas hit it, making powerful waves. As a rule, a seal is simply thrown into the water where it has no chance to be rescued. But sometimes orcas act so strong that they even split ice floes and seals fall through and chew them. Let alone seals, orcas are not afraid to fight even with predatory sharks. They neutralize the queen of sharks, the great white shark, in just seconds. Being an orca is like playing on a beginner's level in a video game you already know all the way through. My point is that one shark is nothing to an orca. One orca can stand up to even a small shiver of sharks and still come out victorious. The orca is definitely the strongest and most dangerous predator of the world ocean for marine creatures. What's most surprising is that for all their power, predatory nature, and size, orcas never attack humans at sea. They may chase a boat or ram a yacht. They may attack humans in captivity, but in the wild, in the ocean itself, they are not dangerous to humans. These black and white giants treat divers and swimmers gently and even often swim with them. You can't swim with sharks like that. Grizzly I think no one would argue that bears are very strong animals. Among them, grizzly and polar bears stand out, and I would like to talk about grizzly bears. Plus, scientists have done a study and found out that the grizzly bear is stronger than the polar bear in a one-on-one -on -one confrontation. Yes, the grizzly may be smaller than the polar bear, but it's much faster and more agile than the polar bear. It is the fastest bear on the planet and can even run as fast as a car. The grizzly also has huge 6-inch long claws and its bite force is so powerful that the grizzly could chew even a bowling ball in half with its teeth. But the main feature of the grizzly is aggression. These bears often have fierce battles with each other and mercilessly massacre their prey. Grizzlies also sometimes attack and chase people. The people of North America have long been very afraid of grizzlies and exterminated these strong and dangerous animals. As a result, by 1922, the California grizzly bear subspecies was completely wiped out. There are plenty of strong creatures not only on land and underwater, but also in the sky. Which one do you think is the strongest of them all? If you're thinking of some eagle, you're right. But there are many eagles. Which one is the strongest? Scientists believe that this title should be given to the South American harpy eagle, and it makes sense. Firstly, it's the largest eagle in the world in terms of weight. Females are larger than males and can weigh up to 20 pounds. That's very hefty for a modern bird of prey. Secondly, harpy eagles are characterized by incredible strength and interesting hunting methods. These birds feed mainly on large prey, for example, monkeys and sloths. As a rule, a harpy eagle stalks a target, smoothly flies up to it, grabs it right off from a tree, and carries it in its paws to a nest or other place. It takes a lot of strength to pull this off. Often the prey flies still alive and tries to escape. But the harpy eagle's grip is very strong, so the hunt usually goes smoothly. 
The harpy eagle may eat the prey itself or share it with its chicks. The powerful eagle can then take a break from hunting for a couple of weeks without any harm to itself. Let's look at the smallest animals in the world. Brachysia nana. Giant anacondas, Komodo dragons, and saltwater crocodiles are all truly enormous reptiles. In fact, they're so big that they wouldn't even notice if Brachysia nana, their antipode relative, got into their mouths. For that matter, this creature is difficult to notice in general because the species of chameleon is less than 1.1 inches in length. Scientists call this endemic of Madagascar the smallest reptile species in the world. By the way, this species is very new. It was discovered in 2021. At first, scientists couldn't even believe their eyes. They were so amazed by the tiny size that they doubted the maturity of the individuals found. Only a microcomputer tomography of the chameleons cleared up their doubts and presented the world with a truly unique animal. Antelopes and chameleons are cool, of course, but what about more familiar animals? For example, dogs. I don't think it's secret that the Chihuahua breed is very small. Such dogs can even be carried in purses. But even among such tiny ones, there are record breakers of their own. This is Miracle Millie, a Chihuahua from Puerto Rico who got into the Guinness Book of World Records as the world's smallest dog. She's 3.8 inches tall and weighs about 0.8 pounds. In the pictures, you can see how tiny the dog is. Even things like a sneaker, a ball, or a bottle seem big compared to her. And this is a full-grown adult. Her owner, Vanessa, says when Millie was just born, she could fit in a teaspoon and she had to be fed from a pipette. Because of her size, she couldn't eat the usual way herself. Vanessa is very fond of Millie and often takes pictures of her, but she admits that there are disadvantages to such a record breaker. Vanessa has to watch her feet all the time in order to not literally crush her pet, and on walks, Millie often gets lost, even in low grass. Western Pygmy Marmoset Let's return to the more exotic specimens. High up in the foliage of the tropical forests of South America, a tiny monkey lives. It hides inconspicuously behind tree trunks and branches like a chameleon and jumps like a squirrel. This is the western pygmy marmoset, and it's the smallest monkey in the world. It's important to note that this is not the smallest primate. This title belongs to the mouse lemurs from Madagascar. The western pygmy marmoset weighs just over 0.2 pounds and grows to about 6 inches in length. Huge gorillas and chimpanzees would have laughed at their <laughs> tiny relative since the western pygmy marmoset can easily fit in the hand of an adult. By the way, the monkey has a very long tail. As a rule, it's longer than its body. It's not tenacious but helps the little monkey to keep its balance when it jumps through trees in search of food, plants, fruit, and insects. In zoos, western pygmy marmosets also eat worms. Speaking of worms, take a look at this. It looks like an ordinary worm. That's good for fishing, doesn't it? But in fact, it's not a worm. It's a snake. Yeah, it's the Barbados thread snake from the island of Barbados. This species is less than 3.9 inches long, so it's not surprising that this snake has the appearance of a worm. But it's not a dangerous snake. However, it is dangerous only for its prey, termites and ant larvae. For humans, the snake is not dangerous. At most, the Barbados thread snake will pose for the camera lying on a coin. By the way, these reptiles have one more interesting feature apart from length. Because of the miniature size, the female lays only one egg, but a large one. The length of the hatchling is 1.9 inches, which is half the length of the mother. But for snakes of this size, this is normal. It's the law of nature. The smaller the snake, the larger the offspring. This strategy allows the babies to come into the world as prepared for life as possible. Scientists believe that if their body length were shorter, they simply wouldn't be able to find food of a suitable size. And finally, I'll talk a little bit about the animal you've probably been waiting for. It's the bee hummingbird, the smallest bird on the planet. I'm sure everybody knows about it, but as a rule, many people's knowledge about hummingbirds is limited to the fact, but there are many interesting things to tell about the bee hummingbird. For example, they weigh only 0.07 ounces and are only 1.9 to 2.3 inches in length. Also, these birds have a frantic heart rhythm. The bee hummingbird's heart beats up to 500 times per minute. Not only is their heart fast, but also their wings. The bird flaps its wings more than 90 times a second. It's per second, not minute. I didn't miss say it. It has to flap its wings so quickly to hover over the flowers and drink the nectar. By the way, the bee hummingbird consumes about 0.07 to 0.08 ounces of nectar per day, which means that the bird eats as much as it weighs itself. 
Another interesting fact about hummingbirds is the ability to fly backwards. This is the only bird in the world which can do so. And the final fact about hummingbirds that many people don't know, these tiny beauties live only in Cuba. And that's all, guys. Which tiny creatures from this episode surprised you the most? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you later.